Hi everyone and welcome to another piano review here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. Today we're looking at Roland's RP-102. This is their entry level digital home piano, 88 notes, uh, but a respectable sound, a really great action, and some hidden features that you get to once you connect the app. We're going to be talking about all of that and more, so thank you so much for tuning in today. If it's the first time that you found us here on the YouTube channel, we would also love it for you to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because come on, become part of our audience. Come back for more. We love this ever growing group of people who just can't get enough about pianos from all over the world. Without further ado, let's get started today with the Roland RP-102. So this is the Roland RP-102, and the year is 2021, which makes this, I believe, either the oldest or the second oldest Roland product still in their current lineup in terms of uh, when they launch the product compared to everything else that's currently being offered. So one might think, well, this is due for a refresh. Does it really still have a place in today's market if I'm going out right now uh, heading into 2022 and looking for a digital piano for an affordable budget. So I thought we'd take a look at it and find out. From a spec standpoint, the RP-102 sits right in between kind of the FP-10 and the newer FP-30X and probably a little closer to the FP-10 than anything. And this product used to go really quite nicely up against, say, the Kawai KDP-70, uh, and I guess in some ways also uh, sort of sits and competes uh, with the uh, Yamaha YDP-144. So it's a basic home digital piano. It's got 88 notes on it. Uh, it's got a uh, quite a respectable action for the price of the unit and it's got a bunch of sounds. It's got some basic features. Um, so we're gonna start by talking about the sound first. We'll talk about the action, we'll talk about the features and then at the very end, we're gonna sort of summarize how this stacks up against today's market and whether it's still a good unit to take a look at. So beginning with the sound, this is equipped with a tone generator on it that puts out 128 notes worth of polyphony. That is, uh, by today's standards in this price point, kind of medium. It's not the lowest you get, it's not the highest you get. It's just sort of down the middle of the road. Um, boy, things have changed. 128 notes worth of maximum polyphony used to be the gold standard if you go back 15 years. 10 years ago, it was still on the high side. Now it's like, ah, yawn. Everybody does 128. And for those who don't know what polyphony is, check out the separate video we've talked about polyphony. Essentially, it's the number of sounds that this can simultaneously uh, produce uh, before you know the, the, the guts, the electronic guts basically just uh, completely run out of runway, if you would. So it's got 128 notes worth of polyphony, which means for the majority of solo piano playing, you're fine. You're never gonna hit that limit. Uh, it also uses uh, Roland's Supernatural Piano Engine, which is a combination of both a multi-layer piano sample, as well as some synthesis that goes around the top of it. Essentially, it allows uh, things like string resonance and damper resonance to be synthesized, key off sound, all that kind of stuff to be synthesized and added to a core sample. And Roland doesn't talk about how many layers of samples go into each you know, version of its Supernatural engine, but we think it's probably somewhere in the four or five range. It would be consistent with some of the other manufacturers uh, and what they've done uh, sort of for this price point. So it's got uh, the 128 and it's got the supernatural engine and that supernatural engine is driving a pair of six watt speakers uh, which again by today's standards is getting on the low side however when you actually get behind the rp102 and you play it through those speakers you get a remarkably big sound not necessarily warm and not necessarily deep because the only way you really get that is with kind of a larger um, either a larger resonating chamber or a larger uh, you know, speaker size 
Um, so something like the Kawhi KDP120 with 40 watts, you're getting more of a warmth and a woofiness down there uh, to round out that bass tone. But this is still remarkably clear sound for something that only has a total of uh, 12 watts worth of rated output power. The other thing I noticed is that this instrument compared to say the FP series, the FP10, the FP30X on Roland, you get more treble out of this instrument straight to the ear than you do out of those other instruments, which I found interesting because all three of those pianos have downward facing speakers. This also has two downward facing speakers, but for some reason, you actually get more treble presentation to the ear than in those other ones. So enough of the yakking without some playing. I'm going to uh, just play this on its default piano mode uh, so that you can hear uh, the tone generator we just talked about. You can hear uh, the speakers we just talked about. Here we go. So, quite a nice dynamic piano. One thing I do notice on the RP-102 that they've really managed to refine and fix with some of the more recent Roland models is that there does tend to be a bit of a spike into that fortissimo sample range. That takes a little bit of getting used to on like the RP-102 or the older FP-30, FP-10. If you're there kind of trying to voice chords and uh, just bring out that top note without hitting that really strident fortissimo. It's an Oscar Peterson tune. Anyway, 
So you can iron those kinds of things out with touch curve. But something that I notice uh, on here, especially coming back to it after some of the newer models. So what we're hearing is the default piano sound. Now, this is equipped with Bluetooth, something that I was going to mention later. Um, and it does not work with the newest Piano Every Day, but you can still use it with the Piano Partner 2. And in doing so, you have access to four acoustic pianos, concert piano, which is what we've been hearing. And then ballad piano. Back on the old FP50 actually used to be my favorite piano patch on the roll and it was that ballad piano. Mellow. Bright piano. So we've got the acoustics there. Then we get into the E pianos. That's tremolo EP. Vintage EP. And some FM, EP bell. So all the standards that you'd expect to see, but in a lot of cases the older version. So that 1976 suitcase uh, that is so prominent on some of the newer Rollins, you don't get that here, but there are some similar sounds. Really a lot of the same samples or uh, sound set that you get on the FP10. Um, pipe organs. And then some jazz organs. A few of those. I don't know where that just came from. Anyway. So a lot of really 
still usable, still functional uh, patches in there. Uh, a pretty wide selection of strings as well in here. That was a mm. seasonal appropriateness. That's that's nice. That's a lovely sample. These are nice. We got some, is that pits? And some jazz cat. So funny. Uh, and then you've got another set of upright, classical, and drums. So I mean, there's a really wide range of tones that are included on there before you even get into the general MIDI 2 patch, which is also available uh, through this when you use the app. So they don't make it available through the onboard controls. They kind of are forcing you into the use of the app, which is uh, whatever. Um, it is Bluetooth, so at least you don't have to get the cable out. But if you do that, you do get access to, for its price range, a monstrous level of sound selection. So that's what we're going to talk about with sound before we move on to a quick discussion of action. Uh, and to summarize, you know, not necessarily bassy, but very clear, crisp, non-harsh speakers which is impressive for their rated size. We've got the 128 notes worth of polyphony, which is, which is ample for a beginner player up to probably a moderate medium player, whether it's a classical or contemporary. And the big thing with the sound is just the sheer selection and overall a pretty high quality of those samples coming out of the Roland RP-102. I mean, there's hundreds of sounds available to you here and Generally speaking, you don't really see too many stinkers uh, of a patch stuck in there. There are some that are a little less impressive than what you get on a modern Roland that just came out in 2021, but nothing that would make you say, oh, that's really outdated or that's really not usable anymore. Everything is certainly still at a professional level coming out of the instrument. We're going to take just a second and come back for a quick discussion on this action. Thank you so much for being with us uh, today talking about Roland's RP-102. One of the biggest features that I have always consistently talked about when it came to the RP-102 and honestly the FP-10 or back then the FP-30 was the fact that Roland was including the PHA-4 action in instruments at this price point. Because I think the PHA-4 is a great action. I mean, it's a very personal thing. Other people have favorites within uh, you know, various manufacturer lines. We've got a lot of Kawhi favorites here on the channel, but we've got a lot of people who really like uh, some of the Yamaha actions or some of the Korg actions uh, or some of uh, you know, the Casio actions even have some, um, you know, have some major fan clubs out there. But for its price, I have always strongly advocated uh, for the PHA-4. Uh, this is because it had escapement, which is not, it, it's more than just a talking point. If you play uh, a lot of finesse kind of stuff, some subtle, quiet stuff where uh, dynamic control in the lower half of the dynamic range is important to your playing, escapement makes a difference. It does 
I, I don't know. I'll say that till I'm blue in the face. It does make a difference. It makes it easier for your finger uh, to really sense where you're at uh, in terms of um, you know the travel on the key and the pressure you're applying to the key. It's just it's it's an extra little reference point your finger has, and I think it makes a difference. So it has that. It's got triple sensor, which for the typical playing setting makes no difference at all. But if you are going to be using this for MIDI input, if you're gonna be having this connected to an app or you're gonna be doing any kind of recording, triple sensors are really good to have. Uh, it creates a more even uh, distribution of, of MIDI across the zero to 127 you know, data point range uh, as part of the MIDI language. Um, you avoid missed notes or spiked notes if you're playing really, really quickly. So a triple sensor, generally it's a, it's a good thing uh, if you're using it for that application. So the PHA4 had both of those. Thumbs up in my book. Then it also uh, came out and had, uh, it wasn't the first one that Roland did, but in, again, in this price range, had a textured white key top. It doesn't cost Roland a lot to do this, but it is more expensive than just a shiny white piece of plastic. There is a cost difference there. So I think the fact Roland did it um, is a good thing. I think any type of texture, whether it's the one that Roland puts on there, or, you know, Yamaha textures, some of their um, more expensive uh, keyboards, uh, Kawhi does the same, Casio does the same. So they all do it at some level. Um, but when it's there, it does create an easier time of gliding over or you know gripping the key. So they did that as well as the black note. And just generally, I like the geometry of the action feels good, it doesn't feel too light, it doesn't feel too heavy, the repetition speed uh, is really great on the action, and it's not crazy noisy. Uh, it is noisier on the way down than on the way up, which is like the opposite problem to say what the Kawhis used to have, which was it was pretty quiet on the way down, but as soon as you release the note, it was noisy on the way up, um, which I think is more disconcerting to people, because once you've released the key, you don't expect it to make a sound. So all kinds of people constantly saying like, what's wrong with the Kawhi? Not 2021, but if you go back before they added that extra padding, um, we did get a decent number of questions where people thought possibly there's something wrong with the action. Like, no, that's just how they padded it. But the Roland was a little noisier on the way down, but not so noisy that your neighbors are gonna complain, um, but a little louder than Kawhi and a little louder than uh, what you'd get on Yamaha. But anyway, so this is the PHA-4. Generally speaking, in my books, the best all-around action that you could get for any keyboard or digital piano in the $1,000 USD range and under. There wasn't any other one that I would, I would prefer. And where it sits right now, I do like what Kawhi's done with their new RHC2 action with the additional padding, which why not just call that RHC3, Kawhi? Just a question. Since you had the RHC2, this has been another modification. Third generation, but just still called RHC2. And that is the one that you can find on the newer uh, KDP120. I do like that action as well. I still think for the majority of playing settings, my preference as, as an action is, is with the PHA4. So we've got all that on the RP102. We're gonna come back for a third discussion on features and functionality other than what we've already touched on. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you in a second. The RP-102 has Bluetooth MIDI. It doesn't have Bluetooth audio, so you can't stream to this with your device and use the speakers. But the speakers aren't like amazing, so not sure why you'd want to do that anyway but you can have a wireless connection. So this is critical for making use of Roland's apps, but it is also really handy if you want to be able to broadcast MIDI without the use of a cable, because this will still work with a up-to-date laptop or computer if you wanna have that kind of Bluetooth MIDI connection. It's not gonna work with older computers. You do need uh, one of the more up-to-date chipsets with the Bluetooth in order to accommodate the Bluetooth MIDI. So it's got that. You also have the USB connection if whatever Bluetooth is not your jam. You can do that too. It's got two headphone jacks, one quarter inch and one 3.5 mil. 
Uh, and unfortunately, it does not have the feature that some of the more recent Rollins have where you can still keep your local speakers on if you were sending this out to some sort of either a headphone or an app or something like that. Uh, so that's, which is always the way it used to be, but now, thankfully, some of the more uh, up-to-date models out there are giving the option of having your local speakers on or off, independent of the fact of whether you're sending something out of your headphone jacks. So it's got the two headphone jacks. It's got three pedals. It comes with the full set of stand, kit and caboodle, and it comes only in this kind of satin black. It's, it's a very durable matte black finish. It's kind of an institutional uh, look, but it's very difficult to damage. Uh, it's not necessarily gonna look as pretty to some people as some of the veneers that you can get on other ones, but it helps roll and keep the cost down. Uh, it also comes with a sliding key cover. As you can see, it comes with a music desk, uh, and it also comes with a bench. It includes a bench. So with the RP-102, this is how I see it stacking up. If uh, sound selection is a really important thing for you and it is for some people they they want more than just a couple of pianos and a couple of roads to play along with or or kind of a token string patch it's going to be a big part of how they use this instrument how they enjoy this instrument maybe they accompany somebody uh, as a regular course of their musical activities and they need to have a pretty good selection of strings to mix with the pianos Maybe they play this in a worship setting where you need uh, you know, a larger selection of organs. Who knows what, but for people out there who need more than eight or 10, like they want 50 or 100, and this is the budget, and action is critical, and you need it in a cabinet like this, not a portable format, there aren't many other options. In fact, I'm not sure there's any other options. Sure. You can get other options with tons and tons and tons of sounds, but it's not going to be a cabinet like this, uh, and it's not going to give you the action. So if you are a lover of the action, as I am, and you got to try that to establish that for yourself if it's a really strong preference or not, if the action is a really big deal, and the sound selection is a really big deal, and you want this in a digital piano package, there is still a huge huge role for this instrument to play, which is probably the reason Roland is still building them and still shipping them. I have not received any notice from anyone at Roland that the RP-102 is going anywhere uh, anytime soon. They're still taking orders, still making thousands of these things. And so perhaps the reasons we've just articulated uh, is why, because it really has not outdated itself yet. There's still a lane there that this is helping to fill. Hope you have appreciated or enjoyed this look into the RP-102. It's the very first time we've actually taken a peek at this instrument, despite the fact that it's been out for a few years. It kind of just got overlooked. Every once in a while that happens. You're doing review after review after review, and people are requesting this one and that one, and you're going down your list of favorites, and all of a sudden you realize, oh my goodness, no RP-102. So, there you go. If it's the first time that you have uh, come and tuned into the channel here. We would really appreciate if you subscribed because we would love to have you as a commenter contributing to the discussions. We love engaging with the discussion below. So please hit the subscribe button and the not notification bell because we'd love to see you back for more videos in the future. Anyway, my name is Stu Harrison. This has been the Roland RP-102 and we'll see you back for more soon.